Hi, my name is Bill Williams and I'm here at Massey University in the Institute of Fundamental Sciences. So here I'm a scientist and I work on biophysics and soft materials. So you might be wondering what that is. Uh, biophysics is really just using physical sciences to understand biological problems and soft materials are um, not sewing but actually gloopy and slimy materials. So I guess I'm what you would uh, call an experimental scientist and what that means is what I'm doing is I'm looking at people's ideas about how the world works and then I'm trying to dream up ways that I can actually test that in the lab. So actually designing experiments to see whether ideas seem to work or not. Okay, I guess I've always thought science is cool ever since I was a kid and when you're a kid you're always asking why, 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 which is kind of annoying to your parents but some people uh, don't grow out of that and that's really what science is, it's just asking how the world works and trying to find it out. So. If you're kind of still amazed by looking at the stars and wondering what that's all about or even think rainbows and bubbles are beautiful things and wonder why they're so coloured, then science is a great way of trying to find out more about those things. I was just fascinated by the world around me, so all sorts of natural things that I saw from uh, the first time I connected a battery to a light bulb and kind of went, ooh, why does that come on? Or the first time I saw a rainbow and wondered why it was split into colours. It just intrigued me and I was just uh, curious about how the world worked and I wanted to find out more. Okay, so in particular the ideas that I'm interested in pursuing is what does the world look like at very small scales? So what I mean by that is imagine you took a magic pill and you could shrink yourself down. And imagine you shrunk down so you're so small that you're only a thousandth of one millimetre big. Then what would the world look like? And so one example of that is uh, something that is shown here on this screen. So this is actually what's called a pollen tube. So you've probably all heard of pollen and some of you will have hay fever in the summer. So it turns out when these tubes land on a plant, when these grains land on a plant, they grow a big jelly tube out of them. And with the aid of our microscope, we're able to see what this jelly tube looks like. And here it is. And the most fascinating thing about this is you can see that inside the jelly tube, there's all these little packages moving along it's kind of like there's uh, little men walking along with sacks over their backs and they're walking along these highways up and down the tube. And so we're trying to understand actually what's going on here and how this actually helps the pollen tube grow. So we do that by trying to understand how small things like these guys here, how they move around. So here's some other small bits that we've got moving around just in our test tube. Again, these are just tiny little particles. So imagine little grains of glass, which are so small, there's a thousand in every millimeter. And the most interesting thing is you can see these guys, they're all moving around, they're doing this little dance. And this is a fundamental property of uh, what the universe is like at this length scale. And this is sort of one of the ideas that we can test to actually see how fast these guys are moving around. So, it's all well and good looking at the moving around, but we want to be able to kind of control things too. It would be nice to be able to go in and kind of like you do with Lego. It kind of be nice if you had these tiny, tiny, tiny Lego bricks and you could understand how to stick them together and make stuff. And so how are we going to go in there? You can't grab these tiny things with your fingers. So it turns out this is one of the coolest things that we're doing at the moment is we're using lasers. So you've probably heard of lasers in lots of different contexts. What we do here is make what's called a laser trap. So it's really like some sort of science fiction tractor beam, or if you know Star Wars, it's kind of like you're using the force. You can go in and grab this particle and move it, but not with your hand, not with some little tweezers, but actually with a beam of light. And actually you can take those particles then and move them around. So uh, here's some little pictures that some students made by essentially taking little particles and moving them. And um, as well as making pretty pictures, we can start investigating other things about this tiny world. We've been using this, um, this tool, this ability to take these little particles and move them to investigate the properties of a molecule which you've probably all heard of called DNA. So every single cell in your body, in my body, in all animals' bodies, has got DNA in it. So this is like... A, it's like an instruction manual that tells the cell what to do. But as well as being a set of instructions, it is a little physical object. It's kind of like you've got a little rope or kind of like a, a necklace and it's all coiled up. So you have something like this in the cell, this DNA, and it's kind of got instructions written around it. But anytime the cell wants to do anything, it has to take a piece of this and 
pull it out a little bit so it can read the instructions. And to do that takes a certain amount of force. And one of the things we're doing here is we're trying to measure what sorts of forces are needed. So in the top here, you can see we've got two of these little particles I told you about. And there's actually a single piece of DNA between those two. And what we're able to do with our laser is basically pull them. So exactly like you're making a catapult or stretching an elastic band, but we're doing it with a single DNA molecule. And that's going to give us insights into actually how much force the DNA takes to open, which has got all sorts of implications to do with understanding how your cells work and ultimately how you work. I think what inspires me most about the science that I'm doing today is seeing that generally in the scientific world, there's more and more interdisciplinary things going on. And I think this is a really healthy thing. I think in the past this was certainly true, but I guess that maybe, maybe 50 years ago it became very partition, like physics was over here and biology was over here, and there was not so much communication and a little bit of suspicion between the two. And I think that now, um, there's more and more science being done at the interface and it's a really exciting thing because you can kind of let your curiosity go and that's where we're going to find out the best things just by wondering about things. So um, the thing that inspires me at the moment is the sort of uh, uh, the totality of, of science and the disciplines working together.